operators are working double time so their jeepneys can stay on the road. But some drivers are having trouble keeping up with the changes. Makoy Popioko returns with this report. This jeepney is a dream come true for Eddie Manguba. After over 20 years of driving other people's jeepneys, he finally had a chance to buy his own last year. But to keep it, he would need to pay 700 pesos every day for the next two years. The problem is, the jeepney is almost two decades old. That is why he fears he could get a flag down by authorities any time, as the government vows to get rid of old jeepneys starting this month. Manguba is slowly fixing his unit, starting with painting the headboard and repairing the ceiling. But he needs to do more repairs. The Jeepney Association, where Manguba is a member, is now strictly enforcing policies like wearing their uniforms on weekdays. Hindi lang sinasabi ko sa mga member na pintahan para maging maayos yung dating ng jeep. Hindi ka tulad makikita talaga bulok. Pag nadaan yan, talagang huli ka eh. Almost all of their members have now repaired or installed seat belts. Jeepney Association President Jose Rigor de la Cruz says smoke emission is also closely monitored. As for Manguba, he hopes the government buys him some more time. I doubt bigyan kami ng panahon na magkaroon ng kaunti kakaya na mapaganda yung jeep namin dahil kasi wala naman kaming kakaya na na. Transportation Under Secretary for Roads, Tim Orbos, says they are pleased to know jeepney operators are cooperating. Napansin ho namin yesterday, natotoo yun, no? there were already some uh, jeepneys, actually several, that were complying. Makikita mo bago yung gulong nila. And then I really, really appreciate it. And uh, the government is really thankful that they're responding to our requirements. We're not after, let's say, the body appearance, but we're after... Items like the brakes, yung gulong, yung smoke emission, yun po yung mga basic that uh, we hope that they would really focus on. No? So rather than uh, let's say make a, a, a general makeover of their vehicles. Our boss says even as they try to stay considerate, enforcers will continue apprehending violators. Makoy Popioko, CNN, Philippines. Three Supreme Court justices will face the House Committee on Justice tomorrow as the impeachment hearing against Chief Justice Maria Lourdes Sereno resumes. Joyce Ilas tells us one lawmaker wants to check the motives of the justices. Did Chief Justice Maria Lourdes Sereno violate the Constitution? Three Supreme Court justices will testify on this allegation as the impeachment hearing against Sereno resumes on Monday. House Justice Committee Chairman Ray Umali says Associate Justice Lucas Bersamin will be asked about resolutions Sereno supposedly issued without full court approval. Associate Justice Diosdado Peralta on Sereno's alleged manipulation of the Judicial and Bar Council and on court rules and procedures. And Associate Justice Samuel Martirez on the delay of retirement benefits of judges and justices. Umali says his committee also invited Associate Justice Antonio Carpio, but begged off as he has no personal knowledge of the issue. His committee will study whether or not they will accept Carpio's refusal to attend the hearing. Meanwhile, impeachment complainant Larry Gadon expressed confidence the House of Representatives will impeach Sereno. Nagahamo na nga ka ng pustahan eh. 100, tama, isang libo eh. Right now, I can uh, take the bet. The testimony of the justices themselves, di ba? Sobrang tibay. Maliwanag na maliwanag yung culpable violation of the Constitution. For his part, ABS Party List Representative Eugene De Vera says they should also assess the motive of some justices in testifying against Sereno. Hindi ko naman tatanggalin din yung, yung pag-iisip na baka masama lang ang loob o dahil na bypass sila. Kaya sila nag-appear ngayon, pwedeng to get back at the, at, at, uh, the Chief Justice. Gano. Three Supreme Court justices and one retired justice testified against Sereno in the impeachment hearings last year. Sereno has repeatedly denied all of the allegations against her. 
Umali says the committee is hoping to finish the impeachment hearings by the end of February. Joyce Ila, CNN Philippines. Controversy hounds the Department of Foreign Affairs with its fully booked passport appointment system. But the government assures the public it is doing everything it can to fix the problem. In a press briefing, presidential spokesperson Harry Roque says among the government's plans are putting up more consular offices outside Metro Manila. They're also rolling out an electronic payment system and improving online appointments. There's also the so-called passport on wheel service starting January 28. Of course, we understand the frustration of our Kababayans and the government that through the Department of Foreign Affairs is exerting efforts now to improve um, passport application. No? Now, at yesterday's launch of the Philippine passports with 10-year validity, the Department of Foreign Affairs announced that it has made and is planning several impro improvements in its passport system. The Foreign Affairs Department also denies there is a syndicate conniving with employees. Secretary Alan Peter Cayetano says they're not, quote, stupid to not know if a syndicate exists. There was a flood of complaints last week after the DFA's website showed bookings were full until March. Some claim travel agencies are selling schedules for as high as 7,000 pesos. Cayetano says this is impossible since the DFA has barred travel agencies from getting slots since September. The latest in showbiz, Robin Padilla is getting a lot of flack for calling out a Korean contestant in Pilipinas Got Talent. In last night's episode, Robin called the attention of G1 Kim saying he should learn to speak Filipino since he's been in the country for a long time. But many people on social media thought Robin was rude and harsh. Just like Ilagan Irish in this tweet, she says, imagine Filipinos being treated that way in other countries. Mark Kevin says Robin's patriotism is great, but scolding a contestant for not speaking Filipino is rude and unprofessional. What a way to pull someone's confidence down. Jaybred, however, comes to Robin's defense, saying the judge stood up for what he believed in. He also admires Judge Angel Loxin, who came to the rescue. Seems many are praising Angel for trying to help Kim talk to Robin. This tweet by Nak says, Be the Angel Loxin in this world full of Robin Padillas. At the end of the audition, Robin thanked the contestant for his love for the Philippines and apologized for scolding him. Robin also posted this photo last night and said, Never allow a foreign power to intimidate you in your country just because they are rich. Be a proud Filipino. Now, the Queen City of the South, Cebu City, is in a festive mood as the week-long celebration for Sinulog 2018 begins. Today, several barangays joined a parade with performances and street dancing from downtown Plaza Independencia all the way to the Cebu City Sports Center. Sinulog opened Friday and thousands of tourists are expected to attend the celebration in honor of Santo Nino or the Child Jesus. Security is tight, leading up to the Sinulog Grand Parade on January 20. Jody Santa Maria and Richard Yap are all set for their TV comeback. They're best known as Sir Chief and Maya from the phenomenal TV series Be Careful With My Heart. Now reunited with Sana Dalawa Ang Puso, they share how they feel about being back together on set. Masaya. Kasi um, ako personally very comfortable na ako talaga na katrabaho si Richard and this is our third project together. So ayun um, and also I'm very excited din dun sa bago naming um, dynamics as partners dito sa Sana Dalawang Puso. Uh, for me, parang we just picked up where we left off. Parang hindi naman nagkaroon ng lal in, in between. Um, ganun pa rin. Masaya. Uh, Siyempre, you're always happy to be... I'm always happy to be working with Jody kasi... Uh, yun nga, komportable kami sa isa, isa't isa. And um, I find this a very exciting project also. Joining them in this teleserie is Robin Padilla who admits he's a big fan of both actors. Yung pong una talagang nahihiya ako sa kanilang dalawa talaga kasi tagahanga din nila ako, bata pa ako, pinanonood ko na sila. 
Hindi po talaga nanonood po kami nung ano eh. Please be careful with my heart. Eh, hindi nga ako makapaniwala nung sinasabi po sa akin na makakasama ako. Talagang nag-isip ako, teka mo na, mahirap yata maging kontrabida sa dalawang to. Kasi kahit ako mismo, solid ako na Jody tsaka Richard eh. Whether on or off cam, Jody Santa Maria continues to inspire her fans. The latest feather in her cap, her educational achievement. Jody made it to the top of her psychology class. The actress admits it has been a challenge juggling her studies and showbiz career. She then shares her secret to success. It really all started with this dream that I have never let go of. And, syempre, dumating ako sa point ng life ko wherein I decided that I needed to pursue that dream. And then, once that, 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 once that I have decided, um, I really made time for school. I know that my work will always be here and, syempre, hindi mo naman na may aalis yun, hindi ba? So it's really about um, finding your time to do something that you like and fighting for that time. Going back to our top story today, Mayon Volcano is still restless with three eruptions since yesterday. Alert level 2 has been raised over Bicol's perfect cone. Fivok says they have detected a crater glow. On the line now is Dr. Ed Laguerta of Fivox based in Albay. Dr. Laguerta, tell us about this crater glow. Could this be a sign that an eruption or a major eruption is imminent? Uh, yeah, uh, this uh, crater glow means that uh, a, a heat source is uh, the source of the crater glow for, for the time being that we observed last night. And uh, uh, this point also to one of the parameters that we that Kivos used for raising the alert from alert level 1 to alert level 2. So we are seeing that if this, this uh, crater would, it would in, uh, increase in intensity, then it would point that uh, at least a heat source is intruding closer to the surface. Mm -hmm. Ano po ang mga signs na, like you said, increasing in intensity? Um, like earlier, Fivox already warned that um, apart from the steam-driven eruptions, possible din po ang hazard or hazardous magmatic eruptions ganito po ba ang uh, pinaghahandaan ninyo yes uh, uh, the uh, parameters that we observed since yesterday up to the present points to that uh, those periodic eruptions is just an initial uh, activity for my own and this uh, crater glow would suggest and the rock falls would suggest that uh, an including uh, magma or pressure is pushing this uh, uh, fragments from the uh, lava dome to have an avalanche of rocks. So in the end, uh, uh, this points to from a nerve-reactic eruption to a more magmatic one. But this could also be proven if uh, two other parameters that T-Box would be sending here, two teams from geodetic and geochemistry teams, if uh, the result of these two uh, QRT teams would uh, indicate that the volcano is uh, inflating or the gas output, the sulfur dioxide, would increase in volume with respect to the geophysical parameters that we get. Mm -hmm. Dr. Laguerta, in the past, uh, Mayon Volcano has been restless as well. How is this different from uh, the activity the past two days? Uh, the, this uh, activity for uh, this uh, since yesterday is just an initial stage of what Mayon is doing like in the past. So we are expecting some more uh, in, uh, increasing uh, activity for my own if we would expect that this would lead to a magmatic eruption. Mm -hmm. And like you said, more monitoring is uh, needed. Ano po? At may mga parameters pa kayong hinihintay? Uh, yes. Uh, like uh, if uh, this would lead to a more bigger uh, explosion or eruption, then the edifice uh, would tend to inflate more 
and the gas output, the salt production, will increase in volume as the magma uh, pushes its way up to the lower uh, lower part of the volcano. So intrusion would be uh, probable for this, and the increase in the gas output would uh, uh, be uh, seen through the survey uh, instrument. And you have many alert levels, ano po, uh, Dr. Laguerta, to warn residents of a major eruption right now. This is uh, alert level 2 pa lang po. Yes, uh, it, only tend that, uh, it only tells us that uh, when we say alert level 2, pointing to a more magmatic uh, phase of the eruption from phreatic, then uh, the more important is uh, when the volcano would tend to increase its activity towards a more magmatic eruption, then the alert scheme or alert level would be raised to three and then to four. And uh, uh, based on past activities of my own, that would be significant. All right, thank you for your time. Uh, that was Dr. Ed Laguerta of FIVOX based in Albay. News this hour. Alert level two is now raised over Mayon Volcano. FIVOX monitored a steam-driven eruption at 8.49 this morning. It says ashfall should be expected. Let's get the latest from FIVOX Director Renato Solidum. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Mike. Sir, two eruptions since yesterday afternoon. Is this indicative of a bigger or a major eruption, Director? Uh, not really. In fact, uh, uh, Mayon's eruptions in the past uh, have been uh, preceded by similar activities where phreatic eruptions would uh, herald the beginning of a new eruption activity. And sometimes this eruption activity uh, need not really result to very explosive eruptions. Uh, sometimes it would result to non-explosive eruption where lava would ooze out of the crater but not explode. So we will monitor uh, the uh, volcano uh, in more detail, and uh, we would uh, evaluate whether this would proceed to an eruption, uh, whether it will be uh, hazardous volcanic uh, explosive eruption or, or not. Director Fivox has warned about possible rockfall and landslides within the six kilometer danger zone, but tell us about the other dangers or health hazards from uh, the volcanic ash and gases, for example. Well, volcanic ashes would be dangerous. One, uh, if fine ash would be inhaled by people, then this would get lodged in their lungs and uh, they would have problems. Second, uh, ashes on the roads would uh, render the roads slippery, so this need to be uh, swept away or hosed down with water so that uh, vehicles will not slide. Third, uh, volcanic ash uh, is also dangerous to airplanes as the ash might uh, get melted inside the very hot jet engines and this would uh, stall the jet engines of airplanes passing over um, areas where ash is uh, being experienced. Director, what about the danger to water sources? Um, there can be some contamination if the ash is uh, significant, but so far the uh, Asphalt events have been concentrated on the upper slopes of the southwest side of the volcano. Finally, your message or advice again to residents, Director. At alert level 2, uh, the volcano activity has been increasing. And uh, people are advised to strictly observe the uh, no entry into the 6-kilometer radius permanent danger zone so that they will not be affected by... Uh, phreatic explosions or even rockfall events which have uh, been occurring since last night. Director Renato Solidum of FIVOX, thank you for your time, sir. You're welcome. Let's now get the latest on the ground from Albay-based journalist Rosas Olarte. Rosas, how is the situation there? Yes, my right now there's crater glow, which is caused by gas from magma slowly rising to the equator, but it's not very visible from uh, us right now due to rain clouds. Only Phoebox can detect if uh, it 
through their seismic instruments. Fivox resident volcanologist Ed LaGuerta said they need to measure the sulfur dioxide or SO2 gas emission, the edifice of the volcano and other parameters as well to confirm their observations. Fivox is sending two teams to Legazpi to study the condition of the volcano. Thousands of people have fled to safety as Mayan volcano continues to spew ash. Ginobatan officials have distributed three kilos pack of rice to each family. There are 16 families in each classroom. They divide the spaces with the desks. They have house rules now, explained by room leaders. Most of them cook and eat meals together than they share, but right now the elders go back to their homes to check their properties and livestock and return in the evening. They said if they still manage, as uh, they have been used to evacuating and moving every time Mayan volcano erupts and live like campers, but if they will be staying longer in the evacuation centers, then there might be problems like health, food, and, of course, personal needs. Right now, four public elementary schools are currently being used as evacuation centers in Ginubatan. Malilipot and Kamalig Towns. Back to you, Mai. Rosas, kamusta ang mga residente dyan? May kababa o may nagpapanik lalo na dito sa balitang may crater glow ang nakita sa Mount Mayon? Mostly, uh, mga nakakausap ko dito, Mai, ay uh, hindi naman nagpapanik pero kaba. Kahit malayo, pero la, uh, mas lalong kinakabahan yung mga nag-evacuate na mga families nga. Kaya ngayon daw sila nag-evacuate kasi takot sila sa rumbling sounds and at the same time yung ash fall. Okay, maraming salamat. Albay-based journalist Rosas Olarte. Mayon Volcano is again giving residents in Albay a scare. Alert level 2 is up as the volcano continues to spew ash. But Fivox says this doesn't mean a major eruption is imminent. Our Rex Remitio reports. The world's most perfect cone volcano grows restless once more. Mount Mayon has been spewing ash since Saturday afternoon. Ash plumes go as high as 3 kilometers. Rocks spill over from the volcano's mouth. The Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology has recorded three steam-driven explosions. This has forced more than 3,000 individuals living near the volcano to evacuate. They are from towns of Daraga, Kamalig, Ginobatan, Malilipot, and cities of Tabaco and Ligao. Residents are advised to wear face masks and avoid entering the 6-kilometer radius danger zone. Volcanic ashes would be dangerous. One, if fine ash would be inhaled by people, then this would get lodged in their lungs and uh, we would have problems. Airlines have also canceled flights to Legazpi City, while pilots are advised to avoid flying near the volcano. Motorists are advised to drive carefully on roads filled with ashes. FIVOX Director Renato Solidum says this makes roads slippery and must be hosed down with water. Solidum, however, says steam-driven explosions do not always lead to a major eruption. This eruption activity uh, need not really result to very explosive eruptions. Uh, sometimes it would result to non-explosive eruption where lava would ooze out of the crater but not explode. Authorities are closely monitoring the volcano as they urge residents to flee if the situation worsens. Rex Remitio, CNN, Philippines.